So this is the AMA summary part two. Sergey got back to us on multiple different questions like he had promised before. So we're gonna go over those. And if you didn't see the previous AMA summary I had, the link is right here on the video. And we'll go ahead and dive right into this looking at the display. He mentions that it's going to be made of Gorilla Glass with an anti-reflection coating. It has 8-bit color, just like the ROG Ally, but the color gamut is broader at about 130% sRGB, while the Ally is around 100 percent srgb people were requesting if we could lower the refresh rate below 60 hertz and he said they're going to test and possibly implement it but he doesn't think that there's going to be much battery improvement to gain over here and the recommendation is still to run at the highest refresh rate for smoothness of gameplay he mentioned that at 144 hertz and 150 nits of brightness it consumes between one and one and a half watt people had asked if the display is going to have e-pin support like the lenovo y7 tablet and unfortunately they said that there won't be Windows pen protocol support and a couple other items about the display or the options for the display in Legion space the Radeon super resolution is already implemented as an option in it just like it is in the ally 800p resolution is already implemented in Legion space so you can downscale to that resolution however integer scaling which has been talked about a lot among the community is probably not going to be implemented but they're going to try and the reason I say it's probably not going to be implemented is because AMD's drivers by default don't let you do integer scaling on an internal display. We've tried this on the ROG Ally and you can't do it without a third party uh, modification to get that to work. So it will be interesting. Hopefully AMD will work with Lenovo on this to allow integer scaling on the internal display. But as it currently stands, it might just require a third party workaround for that. He said that there is going to be an FPS limiter and that they already had plans to implement that but I thought in our previous conversations that they weren't going to implement an FPS limiter so it sounds good that they have it now on their roadmap but there's no release date on that so that may come after it launches moving on there was several answers about the controllers a lot of the demos had like a glossy finish on the Legion Go which looked pretty bad but there was also other reviews that had a matte finish on it and the the glossy is an earlier engineering sample you know these are different samples with varying degrees of stages that they were prototyped in so the matte version is actually a later version so don't worry the glossy version is not going to be in the final production a couple other things about the controllers and we've seen them in video they are designed in such a way that they're ergonomic on their own without an additional holder we'll get to that in the accessories bit in a second there was another question about whether or not the acidity from the palms of your hands could possibly ruin the contacts and he said that they did take it into account that it should not interfere with the controller contacts when they're using FPS mode and that they don't expect any issues as far as vibration goes they're using a linear mass actuator just like the Steam Deck so expect similar haptics behavior and I remember also that he had brought this out that it was going to be on the stronger side so expect a decent amount of vibration Lastly, about the controllers was durability. He said, uh, expect about five and a half years of disconnecting and reconnecting the device five times a day without issue. So if we had to do the quick math, that's essentially 10,000 times is what they've been rated or tested for. There was also a question about the controllers and whether or not they could connect up to other devices via Bluetooth. It said that it currently does not, but they are planning to change it in future updates. So that option may become available after the launch sometime then there was some discussion about the accessories as far as the controllers go there was a concept art and option for in the previous post for the joy cons to connect to a, a holder that could connect both together so you have kind of a makeshift controller they are currently planning to release a model for 3d printing and release that to the public so they can print it they also are planning now to develop a version with a power bank to keep the controller charged for longer gaming sessions which is awesome they don't have any promises about when when that's going to be completed or if it's going to be included in the device by default then lastly they are still in a discussing phase about a connectable keyboard cover this would be an awesome option i think moving on there's power the vram is going to be adjustable to three four and eight gigabyte but 
hopefully there's going to be a five or six gigabyte option as well because ally owners tend to find that five or six is kind of the sweet spot for modern gaming so hopefully they release an update that will include those options as well we're getting different tdp numbers again now the quiet mode is no longer a seven watt but an eight watt mode on battery it will now go up to 25 watt but previously was mentioned only to go up to 20 watt and when plugged in you can have a range between 5 watt and 30 watt the last time they were testing with the 35 watt mode plugged in but i'm unsure if this is going to happen since it's not mentioned now at all and then as far as adjusting in software or maybe in the bios core parking and ram down clock options may be implemented if the amd bios will allow it is what he says then the next category here is the solid state hard drive it's a pcie 4 and not a pcie 3 so that's good that it is using the faster newer technology as far as replacing the ssd he said that he confirmed with their emea or europe middle east and africa warranty service department that you can replace it as long as you don't damage it assuming that that probably covers it for everyone i know that many people in the u.s have replaced their solid state hard drives for the ally and for the steam deck and had no problems returning them as long as you keep your original ssd and put it back in before you send it in for repair then as far as the software goes for legion space there's been multiple demos showing a laggy interface or placeholder items such as like an android option a cloud game option things like this these demos were demos so <laughs> they had missing menus or things were missing out of them or you could adjust the tdp much higher than what's actually being stated as the official tdp ranges you know the software always comes last and their plan is to deliver a final software release over the air update just like the steam deck did when it gets closer to the sales embargo date so that means that the people that are getting these in their hands to review on youtube and stuff they're going to be getting updates as soon as they get it in their hands people that buy it are going to have to update as soon as they get it so this is pretty much standard operating procedure for these devices and he also had a reminder that software is a continual improvement process and it's never really finished but they do have a roadmap that is stretching well into 2024 about the items that they want to include and address in the legion space software sales embargo date is still the 31st of october and that there's no embargo date on placing pre-orders however currently on best buy's website it's still marked as coming soon and not available for pre-order but there have been other areas that people have been able to order through their official lenovo sales distributors and then as far as reviews go there were some items lost in translation but he's saying that there will be reviews of the final product before it's officially released on the 31st but of course normal consumer reviews aren't going to come before that point so that was about all that he covered unfortunately i still don't have an official announcement or confirmation that the one terabyte model may be available or not be available in the u.s so we'll have to see what transpires there but at this point the ama is officially closed i don't think he's going to respond to any more comments in there this may be the last official news that we get from lenovo on the legion go until the final product is in someone's hands to review as i hear more news i will try and cover it so please subscribe so you don't miss it and i will see you guys next time